flexors coming down like this, partially covered by this muscle in here because it's overlapping a little bit, it's going down to the palm, the palm of the hand, right? So these are going to be now the flexors, and this is the color I'm going to use for the flexors. Right? So you see how, of course, these are many more muscles that, that I'm showing because there's quite a few muscles in here. This is not just one. It's actually at this point I would see two muscles that we, we're going to see we're going to see later on and, and next week. And this in here, just a superficial or four muscles. So um, it's a big bunch of muscle. But I'm concerned now not with all the muscle. I'm concerned to see how the forms are changing and developing. So, so in here I could kind of show a little bit the line of section here, right? To see the specific um, the specific volume. So now let's see this, the final step. So this is halfway between uh, supination and pronation. So now the last step is going to be this, where I have, again, uh, the head of the um, humerus, the humerus here, right? And then um, uh, distal epiphysis, the distal, bo this distal body of the, the articular um, uh, extremity of the humerus. And now again, the, the, the uh, ulna is going to be a slightly at an angle, but the radius this time completely goes, if this stops halfway, this completely goes on the other side in pronation. So always from the outside, because this is the lateral disimedia, only from the outside, um, uh, you start with the, 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 the uh, uh, radius from the outside, and then now you go across and you end up here. So now this, my hand is going to be now seen from the dorsal view, right here. And, um, and, and now here I have the opposite than this. So if you hear, here I have radio and ulna. In here, I'm going to have ulna and radius, okay? So let's see what happens when I put muscles over it. I start again with a very, very faint uh, outline, okay? Um, so learn to use the hand very freely, very freely like that. Maybe not just not just the hand like that, because that is a very short mark. It's good for detail, but when you do long lines, you want to just to have just barely the weight of the pencil over it, like a like an orchestra director, right? Just barely the weight of it, and then come down like this with very very faint marks. So here I have now the volume of my forearm is going to change direction because it's going now that direction. I've in turn, it's going to go that direction, right? So here. And then now I see the hand from the dorsal point of, point of view here like this. And same thing, I can now block in quickly the, the deltoid. So again, be, be careful. This is not going to be an internal rotation of the upper arm. The upper arm rem remains always from the frontal view, right? So I don't turn the upper arm, just the forearm moves, right? The upper arm remain fixed in the same position. Otherwise, you're gonna have different. Uh, you're gonna have a different um, scenario, which is which is by the way I included here. This is the internal rotation of the forearm. See that? So, sorry, of the upper arm. Apologize. So now here I have. Once I block in this forming here, I say I can't. I kind of like it. I measure it. So now I have here the uh, radius and here the ulna. And now I draw the blocks. The blocks of the muscle are gonna define this form more organically. Right? The deltoid, pectoralis, bicep. Quickly, because again, I don't want to spend too much time on this tricep, brachialis. But now, now starting from this lower third of the upper arm, I have my brachioradialis moving up like this. And where it has to go? Here, right? It has to go down here across. So what happened is this. This form here will wrap over this cylindrical form, see that? That's why it's important to think three-dimensionally when you draw, because then as I draw this, I'm thinking, okay, this is going over a curved form. So it helps me in drawing this more more correctly, right? 
So this goes down like this, okay? and it'll end up here at the radius. So now you see that first we have this parallel, this coming slightly across, this going completely across, right? Which will it'll create a bulge. It will create an interesting, nice bulge in the forearm when it's uh, pronated. So from here now, um, just below the, the condyle, the, the epicondyle, I have now the volume of the extensor of the fingers that are go going to be more visible. Make sense? So this is the extensors of the fingers and the carpus. Right? Going down to the fingers like that. And this is going to be the um, extensors, no, sorry, the flexors. So I still see a little bit of the flexors in here. So um, look at the mirror. Do this. Look at the mirror. Do go from supination to pronation, and you're going to see exactly all these three um, muscular, mu muscular volumes um, uh, at the same time. Right? So we see the, all the three muscles at the same time, three group, muscle groups um, at the same time. When I get a little bit, you know, excited with anatomy, I start slurring the word. I have to slow down. Maybe I have to take some some chemical like Percocet or something. Calm down a little bit, right? Okay, so now, but you know, anatomy is exciting. Anatomy is beautiful. So we need beauty in our life, don't we? Because the world can be ugly. So we need beauty. So here we go, right? So these are the three volumes coming down like this. Makes sense with a complete uh, pronation of the hand. Now, this is now the radius, and that is now the ulna. And I do see this bump in here more than that. I do see that bump. So now think of this. Think that when uh, I um, have my arm flexed, right? I flex the arm like this. Is seen from the front. So I draw, let's say, first the um, well, let's draw first the bone. This is the um, uh, humerus, right? And uh, this is the joint. Now, from the humerus, I go to with the um, ulna, and next to it, I'm flexing the hand. Next to it, I have the radius. So if um, if the radius now is um, Um, so the radius is on the outside, right? So on the outside, it means that I have the um, the thumb outside, right? Here like this. I have the thumb outside, makes sense? So now in here I will have my volume like this. And uh, this muscle in here, you try, you put, put your forearm in front of, of the of the mirror and do this, right? Flex your arm with the thumbs outside and you see that the volume of the bicep will bunch up a little bit, not a lot, depending really how, how hard you, you try. But this volume in here, this action of turning the hand like this and flexing up will make the, the bicep bunch up a little bit, right? So now in this case, I know that on this side in here, I have the radius outside and inside the pinky, therefore the ulna. Make sense? So now the bones are, let's see if you guess it, parallel, right? Because the, the, because the, uh, the thumb is on the outside. Right? So, and the, this is the radius, right? So you notice how this, the volume of the bicep in here will bunch up like that. Okay, brachialis, and this is the volume of extensor volume of the flexor a little bit. I see these. So now let's see what happens uh, if I have now my um, bones crossed. Right. So I start with same humerus, right? Humerus up in here like this. And now what they do, start again with the ulna. The ulna is going to be here. The ulna is going to be my, my reference, right? Ulna is here. But now, but now, the radius, which always starts from the outside, that doesn't move from there, right? Will go across like this, right? Which means that now my thumb is not on the inside, 
which means that now I see the I have the Palmer view. Makes sense. So, um, so now, but if you do this, now I can add I can add the the volumes of the arm, right? So, one second, let me see if I can get these bones a little bit more, a little less barbaric. I'm I'm hurrying up because the video is becoming too long, and then and then I cannot download it, and it becomes a logistical nightmare, right? So, but but it makes sense now. You always follow the thumb, and you know which side the radius is on. Right? So now here I have the forearm. Actually, let me draw first a little bit of the upper arm, right? And here I'm gonna have the forearm coming out like this with here, the olecranon, the bump of the bone in here. And now if you notice, notice that as you do this, your bicep is really not bunching up as much as you do when you have the, uh, the hands in supination and flexed. So we can see how the various poses, um, the various um, movement, will create inherent um, changes in the volumes of the muscle. Right? So try, try to do this. Maybe take a, try, uh, try to move the arm like this uh, in front of the mirror. Take a few pictures, study them, and maybe um, draw them. Okay, goodbye.